since you say that it, it comes more naturally to you, to you to do the fiction, uh, is there something that you have to turn off that you're doing in your fiction in order to write the poetry, or is there something you have to turn on in order to write the poetry? Well, uh, poetry has been neglected lately. Sorry, poetry. For shame. <laughs> but see, Nate <laughs> keeps bugging me to finish his story. <laughs> but, um, of course, poetry is shorter. So there's a lot, lot more emotion because you, you don't have much space to fit it in there. And most of, most of the poetry is, like, it's a heavy thing. Uh, I don't know if we have time for one more, but there's one. Uh, it's, it really, you know, an incident. Usually they're based on an incident, either a conversation or an incident, something I come across. Now, the fiction might be from the headline or some story from the paper, just like what's in the name, that Homeland Security had the wrong person. But uh, they don't overlap, and I'm, I'm never tempted to take, like Uncle Mary would probably make a good story, you know, he'd be, be a mean guy, you know, but not, not a likable person, <laughs> but I'm not tempted to do that. And like uh, the veteran poet, I'm sure that would be a downer just from what he said about how he was struggling to maintain his sanity. And I could take, like, Gone with the Wind, one of the people right. that escaped. You know, you, you could always pick. If, if, I'm, if I'm teaching a, a workshop on character development, I might have some, some pictures from the newspaper. And I'll tell them, pick one of the people in, in the picture, but don't pick the person at the front of the picture. <laughs> pick somebody from the background, somebody from the back who's not the star of that picture. And, you know, where did they come from, you know? Why are they there? Where do they go? You know, just think about that person. Okay, Alice. Okay. Uh, this is Lily. And I used to belong to, uh, before they tore down the building and put up the Taco Bell on City Avenue, there used to be a big blue bubble, which was a health club. And um, I used to go after school, I'd go there. And when you go to the gym the same time, on a particular day, the same people were there. And so that's how I met Lily. And she was on a treadmill. To me, a treadmill is one of the most boring things. <laughs> I'm on it for five minutes, and it feels like five hours. So you carry on conversations with people, make the time go. So this was Lily and when I, I met her. And this takes place over time. You know, it wasn't, you know, just one, one time. Lily, she smiled. Every time I saw her at the health club, she smiled. Walking side by side on treadmills, we shared our lives. She spoke in a barely there voice. She lived around the block, almost behind the club. Her husband was a tailor with his own shop. She helped men customers clothes. Her daughter had two children, Lily's only grands. All conversations were on the surface, nothing to hint of her past. One day, she had on the short sleeves, and I noticed her arm just below the short sleeve. My breathing stumbled and shallowed. The numbers were blurred and faded with age. I never heard what she said next. Her tattoo drowned out all sound. you know and you don't question you know it's just and then I can think of she's smiling all the time mm -hmm. how could how could she be smiling instead of wanting to kill somebody <laughs> or to get even mm -hmm. and she wasn't that old she had to have been a child at the right, time right. but uh, that was Lily I don't think I ever showed her the poem well, Alice, okay. thank you so much for, for doing this. It's very enlightening and really got to see yeah, kind of an in-depth for fiction yeah. writing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Nice. And thank you, Mike <laughs> and Connie, for your hospitality. Thank you, Alice. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. It.